Welcome to Peterson Sawmills, the factory in Rotorua, New Zealand. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening depending on where you're at. I'm glad you could make it today. So this is our yard. Um, today we're going to show you um, three or four different sawmills. Behind us we've got uh, Junior Peterson. Just over here that's our smallest machine and then I'm gonna, just going to swap the other side. And then we've got a winch production frame in the middle. Um, and then our largest one is the automated swing blade mill. So um, all of those three are going to be running for you. Um, we're going to be doing some basic sawing and then a couple of technique things. We've got a range of timber we're sawing today. We've got a range of boards we're sawing today. We're going to do some slabs. Um, we're going to do some planing, I hear. I've been doing this for 29 years. My husband's been doing it for 30. Uh, we've taken my dad's legacy and we've carried it on and we've stuck with the high quality stainless steel and the aluminium uh, design features and quality so that sawmillers can leave their sawmill out over, overnight or you know leave it out on the farm for a week and it's, and it's not going to rust on you. Um, so there's, there's a lot of reasons that we are the number one sawmill in the world. Um, but before we get you started today, um, we are going to show you some highlights from the last two days of demo days. And that's when the people actually came. So we've told people to stay away today so we have some quiet. Um, but I'd love you to see what we've had going the last two days. Thank you.
Colby always do your vertical fire.
Yeah, perfect. 70, 74 both ends. And then I'll sharpen up so I've got a good sharp blade for all your good timber.
Oh, that's a pretty slab. Hi everyone, my name's Greg. I work in the customer service and sales team for Petersons. My job is to um, talk to you to folk out there and uh, find out what your needs are with your sawmills, um, give you the details of our sawmills and uh, get the best possible sawmill for what you're trying to do. Um, so today we're here at the digital demo days. We're going to show you our sawmills. We're going to start off with the Junior Peterson, um, which is our uh, baby sawmill if you like but it's not such a baby so uh, we're going to show you what it can do and uh, it's ideal for the the hobbyist the farmer the rancher somebody that wants to even build their house so um, it's quite a neat little sawmill and you'll see from what Aaron's going to do shortly uh, it's quite capable of cutting good dimension lumber and timber and, um, and uh, our junior Peterson owners are very very pleased with their mills and they love using them so we're going to cross over in a minute we'll start the sawmill up we're going to cut some uh, cut some boards and, uh, and and you can see you know talk you through what he's doing when we're doing that
so we're cutting some six for one um, boards here. Uh, they're going to be used as fence palings. Um, so you can see that uh, Aaron's cutting these boards in the vertical dimension. So um, a six inch cut, vertical cut, um, with, a, with a one inch horizontal cut. So we're cutting, we're cutting pine. So these boards are about six foot long. You can see how the, the Junior Peterson handles that quite easily and, and that's a full depth cut. So the, the, the sawmill has a six inch cut so it can cut up to six inches by six inches. But we can also easily use the other side of the saw blade. So we can double cut and we can cut beams to 12 inches wide by 4 inches deep, which is quite a decent sized piece of lumber. So the frame of the Junior Peterson sawmill is manufactured from mild steel and it's zinc coated and we did that to make a strong robust small sawmill um, and, and be an affordable mill for people who, who don't use it all the time and just want um, a hobby mill or a, a part time mill. Very solid, very robust. You can see how stable that sawmill is rolling up and down our fixed tracks. That's Chris Brown doing the stacking. Chris is our sawmill designer. He's been all around the world. Many of you folk out there will know him. Aaron Kalan is operating the mill. He's our sales manager. Um, Aaron's been right through the Pacific and around the world as well. So been with been with Petersons for about 15 years. You can see how quick and easy it is um, cutting these boards with a Peterson. So Aaron will finish cutting these these six for ones and uh, drop the sawmill down and, and start another layer. So layer by layer from the top of the log. So the Junior Peterson um, cuts dimensional lumber like we're seeing now. Um, it also has a, 
a slabber, a clip-on slabber that we can remove the blade, put the slabber bar on and cut slabs. From there we can put a planer blade on and plane those slabs once they're dry. And we've also got a sander kit to finish the slabs through to a tabletop, bench top finish. And a uh, very versatile machine, we can bring slabs back to the sawmill, we can edge them. Uh, so it's a real all-rounder and it can do the things that our big mills can do as well. So um, wonderfully versatile um, all-round sawmill. Yeah, so this fence that we're cutting, these palings, are going to be for Karis's fence at home. Uh, Chris, will be, Chris and Karis will be building the fence, and uh, the post will come from the, the other logs that you're going to see later cut by the um, automated sawmill. So with pine in New Zealand, we we cut the cut the timber as you see. Um, it will be treated um, for um, durability outside, and then it'll be uh, will be dried and then treated. Yes. So you see Aaron's worked his way across the log and uh, th there's a, a few more boards there to get but one of the great things with the Peterson Mills is that we can recover a great amount of the usable timber from the log and minimise the waste so um, very easy to cut board by board minimal waste. Anybody out there, if you've got any questions you'd like to ask us, please feel free to come back on the live feed and uh, we'll try and answer your questions or, or do whatever you'd like to see. So uh, please feel free to, uh, to come back to us in that way. So that's the last of that layer, um, quite a number of boards, I didn't count them but uh, a great number of boards that come off that layer and, and so it's ready to drop down for, for another layer of
Um, so that's our, that's our demonstration of the JP for now. As I said, come back to us with any questions that you have about the Junior Peterson. Um, forgot to mention, it can also cut weatherboards, um, tapered boards, siding. Um, that's a standard feature on the Junior Peterson um, and very popular with a lot of people building cabins and, and, um, and chicken coops and, and barns and things. So, yeah, it's, that's a, a great feature. So very versatile sawmill and uh, we're selling lots of lots of junior peterson so um, come and come and ask you can call me from around the world on our toll free numbers um, my name's greg and uh, happy to answer your questions and give you whatever information you need about the junior peterson the next we're gonna next we're going to go to the, the our slabber the dws fastest portable slabber in the world um, and uh, we, we're going to cut a, a special log over here and um, so we're going to run through slabbing with the with a dedicated wide slabber the DWS and following that we'll go on to the winch production frame which is our big dimensional sawmill the, the larger version of the JP um, a commercial mill and we're going to cut on the same tracks as the DWS, we're going to cut some dimensional lumber. So um, it's a popular option for some of our owners to run two sawmills on the same tracks, and uh, you'll be interested to see that. So you'll see that coming up soon. So while we prepare for um, the DWS to start up, the boys are just cleaning up the site. So we've had two days. Um, We've had two days of lots of sawing, so there's lots of sawdust around, and that's something that you know you need to do on your saw milling site regularly is um, tidy up your site. It's a bit like the kids' bedroom. <laughs> if it's tidy, it's efficient. Um, so this is an elm log. It's obviously very old. It's very large, um, and one of our good customers, um, Mark, has brought that in. That's his log. Um, so yesterday we cut a couple of slabs with a dedicated wide slabber. Um, we're going to do another one today to show you. Now I don't know if you know about the middle of a log, so the very pith of a log is um, a little bit softer, the very, the very middle of the log. So if you got a wide slab straight through the middle, that pith would dry faster than normal and your slab would cup or dish. So it's best to get the slabs from above the pith and below the pith. And around that pith is where you get the legs for your table that you're going to build. So that's what they're going to do. They're going to take a slab off and then they're going to swap to the sawmill, the dimensional sawmill, which is on the same tracks and cut maybe 4x4s or 5x5s for the legs. Now I haven't been able to look at the growth rings at the end of this log to establish how old it is. I'm just going to pop over there and see if Mark actually knows a little bit of history on this log. So it's an elm off a local farm. Yep. We don't know quite how old it is. I'd be picking 60 70 years old. 60 to 70 years old. That's yep. really cool. And how did you establish it was elm? Um, mate of mine, Lewis, my, yep. my worker. So He's he a knows tree his... specialist. In ah, it. I took him about three weeks to find it. Oh, right. What species elm it was, yeah. Right, okay. So, and what are you going to make from it? Um, furniture mainly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So now we're doing a big slab. How thick is that slab? 75 mil or three inches. And how long will that take to dry? Uh, I'm picking maybe a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah. Okay, so we'll talk about a, an inch a year. Basically, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it could be it could be longer. Yeah. And, and 75 mil, obviously it moves a bit as it dries. Yeah. How much are you going to end up taking off to get that finished in the end? Oh, uh, I'm um, hopefully it will finish around 60 mil. Okay. Uh, so 15 table. mil, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's always good practice to cut it larger than you need so that you can go yes. back and flatten it. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Yeah, so once the slab seasons, you can work it to the size you require for you. Yeah. Now, do we know how wide this log is? How wide the diameter? Um, 50 round. 950. 
So for the Imperials of you, that's uh, around three foot. Yes. Okay. That's three foot, Excellent. Yeah. And how long? Uh, three foot. Four meters. So that would be. Um, so three point nine meters. Um, four times three, about. 15 foot long. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, it's it's hard doing the conversion. Yes. <laughs> so um, that's a, a double skip chain. So they've got there's not teeth every single length. There's a big yes. gap between teeth. Yes, so it's true. more efficient yep. cutting. That's actually flying through there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so well. So they're using little chops. So that the slab doesn't pinch yeah, the blade after the it's been sawed. And, yep. and and Mark, how long have you been sawing? Um, I've been in the sawmill industry uh, not quite 30 years. 30 years? Wow. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, um, working for myself for that yeah, 20 years I've been in the milling game myself. Fantastic. And what kind of sawmills have you run? Um, I've had my hoe. Yep. Old hard. Wow. Lucas. Yeah. Nice. And I did have a wood miser for a little bit, but a bandsaw mill was no good for my requirements because I saw a lot of hardwoods. Right. And you get a lot of wandering with a bandsaw, so yep. that's why I opted for a swing blade and a slabber. Okay. So, so what have you got now? I've got a DWS and oh, a yep. WPF tenant. So it's just basically what you see there is what you've also got. Yes, pretty much okay. set up your running there, yes. And do you run uh, your sawmills full time or is that like a compliment to your other business? Um, I did have them originally for a compliment to my earth moving for the quiet times. Yeah. But for the last oh, nearly two years they've been running full time or had men on them. Wow. Yeah. So how many guys have you got? I had two milling and three earth moving. But, oh yeah. Um, I like to have two well. Just makes it that quicker, more efficient. And not so hard on my men for fatigue and yeah, yeah, yeah. things like that. They all can swap around during the day. Timber is heavy. Yes. <laughs> so, um, what? So, give us an example of what are some of the jobs you do with your mill. Um, well, I've I've started getting cutting cabins mainly. Oh yes. I'm promoting exotic native like natural timbers that's got no treatment. Oh right. Because it's better for the environment, better for the builders. Yep. Because there's a lot of arsenic and treated pine. Yes. Um, you look at the amount of people that are handling treated wood with bare hands. Oh yeah? I haven't seen. What happens? Well, you know, after time you can get sick, arsenic poisoning. Oh. You know? Yeah. That's why you see a lot of builders. Yeah. Um, oh. hate working with like over H3 treated timber, like H4 and H5. Very good point. Yeah. So um, I've just started really promoting exotic timbers that don't need treatment, like Lorsianas, Macacarpas, certain species of gum, you know, your redwoods and... So you can put, what can you put on the outside of your house without treating it? Um, heart, redwood, Macacarpa, Lorsiana. So that has to be the heartwood, so yes. no sap wood in no it, sap like the red stuff from the middle? Yes. Right, got yeah. it. Um, Mac, redwood, Lawson. Yeah. Yep. Lusitanica, which is a Lorsiana Macacarpa cross. Oh yeah? Like there's heaps of species of wood around you can use now. Um, there be cedars and all sorts. Let's go and have a look at this slab. Yeah. Oh, we can't get too close. Huh, apparently our microphones will jump over the other oh, microphone. So yeah. you, you have to see it from the camera. So are they going to do another slab now or are they going to move to the sawmill? Another slab. Okay, another so they Okay, so they haven't got quite to the pith. Yeah. At the pith is where they want to get the, these legs for your yeah, table. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I want my table legs. Yeah. And um, oh, just any little bits of timber for joining or notching together. Yeah. So that's actually a really good combination, being able to have your sawmill and your slabber on the same track. Yes. Because you can chop and change yeah. as the defects in the log go up. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes
Yeah, well, I don't see any waste yet. No. And even the little bits off the top and bottom you can use for turning. Yep. Well, there's lots of fuel on the side of that first that we cut off. Okay, well, we'll, 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 uh, well, our cameraman to come back yeah. and have a look at that in a minute. So you're one of the local wood turners who would train that to turn the bowl. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is our second slab. Do you know what size motor is on that? A uh, 27 horse. A 27 cola? Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. righty ho. I mean, it's just a six feet. And how often do you have to sharpen that? Um, well, if you've got a good man on the floor that cleans his rod to make sure there's no stone or dirt, just flat two rods quite easy. Two logs before you have to cut? Yes. Jump. That's pretty good. Yeah. Providing your logs clean and you, uh, you don't force it through the harder parts of the wood and dull your teeth off the floor. Yeah, so you've got to let the train do the work. Yes. And, and when we say no crap in the log, you mean no no gravel in the bar. So yeah. you haven't like pulled it through your driveway first. Yes, well, <laughs> actually you notice this log, I've stripped most of the bark off it because it had been lying in a muddy paddock. Oh, right, okay. So I you don't want that. the bark off it just to make sure it's clean. Very nice. Because you can end up with all the stones or bits and pieces in your mud. Yep. So do you have the uh, planer layered as well? No. You don't? Okay. Oh, just the oh. <laughs> so I think we're going to get the planer blade on the junior later today. And um, Chris has got a couple of dry slabs somewhere. Yes. So he'll put those on and uh, we'll see how that works. But I think they're also going to do some weatherboards. We've had some requests for weatherboards. Oh, okay, yeah. So there's a couple of interesting things that we're going to do today. It's a good function when you do for having a little bit of assessment. Well, they're versatile, you know, you've got to listen to what the four millers need. Yes, well, that's like, for me, that's why I like using um, a lot of timbers that they need treating for. I do the playhouse for a thing a few weeks ago. Yeah. We milled all the back of carpet, cut back the carpet, the board, the whole, the whole playhouse come out of one tree. Wow. And it was growing on the side of a sixth and a little farmlet. So, that's awesome, yeah. so it stayed in the family, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's just good having the options. Cut where the board. Nice. Okay, so that second slab's done. Yep. They have to get a, a bit of a manpower happening here because it's quite heavy. Yes. So your offside of Josh is fabulous. Yep. yep. Nice to get yeah. some uh, strong young yep. blood coming through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it's good to have, yeah, I'm training him up to run all my mills now. Nice. Having a hit leaps and bounds, very smart man, which makes it easier for yep, me. Yep, no, he seems keen. Yeah, exactly. He's not as young. So uh, when you dry these, you just dry them outside, do you put a roof over them, a um, cover I've, over them? I've got a big shed that I stick it all in. Okay, so it's so it's got yep. the air going through and no rain? Yes. Righty ho. Yep, and um, once they get to a reasonable moisture content, yep. I've actually um, got a natural kiln. It's all, you know, it's just like a hot box. Oh yeah, like a solar, solar kiln. Oh yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah, it's just a, yeah, well, like a solar kiln. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I'll just stick them in there just to finish them off if I need to use them. Oh, but nice. Um, but yeah, I, I like to dry all my timber sort of 80% naturally. Yeah. Now that's yeah. just lovely grain running through there. That's beautiful, isn't it? I, I don't think we've ever seen an elm in the yard, so that's a first. No. It's interesting how it flecks between white and darker colours. Yes. Yeah. Right, so we're going to cut some legs. Four by fours. Four yeah. by fours. Okay, boss says four by fours. So these are the legs of whatever furniture he's going to end up building. 
Because that will get the puff out of the core, won't it, easy? Yep. Now, since this is your table, do you want to do this? I'll go and lift them off. I'll let okay, Chris I'll them take, I'll take your mic oh. off you. Thank you so much. No, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy. Right, so now we're about to start up the sawmill and do some nice big 4x4 four four legs out of this beautiful elm. So the first part is to remove the waste. The log is quite tapered, so there's a lot of waste. To just move up a bit more, get that tapered piece off the end. I said uh, every little piece is going to be used, so even though that looks like the slab pile. Um, he'll be able to use that in um, smaller segments of his furniture. And uh, since work with a local um, log turner, timber turner, and they use every little piece for things. So you don't normally on a sawmill, but than making for um, Chris cuts it. Right. <laughs> so they're now on the second four by four. And even though we called this the uh, digital demo day, we do have customers showing up, very interested, keen to learn as much as they can about the sawmills. You can't see them, they're behind me, but I'm just going to go stand next to Greg for a second. What are you doing to me? Well, we're just listening in on your conversation, okay. Greg. <laughs> I, I recognize you had some customers here. Hi, Nick. How are you? Hello. Carry on Dude? talking. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Carry on talking. We'll, we'll learn a bit about what we're, what we're talking about back in the background here as well. We were talking about
So that's a whole layer of 4x4s four they've now cut. Right, so we're just going to look at the um, top piece. This is the very first piece that came off the slab. Um, and to anybody it would look like a piece of garbage. But this is actually a burl. And a burl is where the timber has grown circular and it's got all sorts of configuration happening in there. So it's, it's actually a defect in nature. But... Um, this is going to go to Pete, our wood turner, and he is going to take off the top and he's going to find some amazing things in there. Probably a bowl. I could just see a beautiful bowl out of that bit, inverted, and that's just going to be incredible when he finishes that. So this is how you use every single piece off of, you know, a nice log that's durable. You don't have to treat it, you just use it as it is. So I can't wait to see what comes out of that. Right, we're going to go back to our slabbing and get our, I think they said it was going to be a two inch this time. Taking some uh, footage of the last slab we took while Chris sets up on the junior. Beautiful grain in there. Nice and smooth too. So even though this is a basically a chainsaw uh, chain, bar, that feed was nice and even. So.
So basically from every two inch board you get two weather boards. No, actually he's cutting less than that. So that's that's under an inch. So he's taking an inch. Let's have a look. That's about no, you're right. It's about an inch at the top and maybe a quarter of an inch at the bottom. I'm used to metric, so it's a, it's a bit hard to judge in inches. <laughs> So that's basically a six by two that he's cut diagonally. And that's how you cut your weatherboards. I didn't want to cut too much of my log into weatherboards because this log is meant to be my fence palings and my fence palings want to be six by ones. I'm sorry, that's a six by one that he's cut diagonally. That's more like it. This is Pete, hi, welcome. And thank you so much for your help over the last couple of days. No You've worries. been very helpful. So Pete is a um, jack of all trades, master of none now. He's a local wood turner. <laughs> He's um, really helpful. He's uh, kind of those guys that are just uh, connected to sawmill yards because you know there's timber and there's gonna be cutting happening and everything. So Pete, what do you do? Um, I sort of classify myself as a wood cutter, but I turn, I cut wood, I cut firewood, um, cut slabs and sell slabs, process timber, just make a living out of wood basically. So you've got that disease called sordistitis? I certainly have. <laughs> There's no cure for sordistitis. Right, so we've seen um, this elm um, log being dissected into slabs and posts and things. And then we see this is the first cut that came off. It was a piece of off cut as far as I can tell. But tell us what you see in that. It looks like a piece of wood you put on the, on the firewood pole, but there's a, a beautiful knuckle in there that I can turn a bowl out of. And if I turn that upside down, it's over. It's a bit heavy, hey? <laughs> turn it over. Oh, it's actually even hollow. So we will cut around that, take that out, and that'll be a, a functioning salad bowl or a fruit bowl. The rest of the, the wood with a bit of spalting in, I can make rolling pins, pens, anything small out of. So you're repurposing a piece of firewood into some beautiful, usable household things. That's why we love people like you. Now, you said something about pens, so show us what you do. I took some wood home last night. It was an off cut from this log. Yesterday. And yesterday. And I glued up those two pens there. One's a bit wow. of OB and one's a bit of heartwood. So you they did were, this yesterday? They were last glued, night. glued up last night and turned this morning. Is that amazing or is that amazing? So a piece of wood that... Oh, it's actually got a pen in it too. It's got a pen in it as well. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that in New Zealand, that is a little stick of wood five inches by an inch by an inch and it becomes a $25 pen. Wow, can we look at what else you've got in there? Yeah, there's just a bit of, I haven't got that many in here but we've got a few other pens. That's a one made out of deer antler, some wow. spalted beech, black walnut, rewa rewa, swamp cowry, rimu, those are two rewa rewas and that's another swamp cowry. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing that you did that so fast. So you have all these tools at home. Yep. Wow. No worries. Wood turners, go down to your local sawmills and if one guy's yep. got a Peterson, be good friends with them. <laughs> Absolutely. No worries. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Righty ho. Thanks, Pete. Um, he's a really hard worker too. He's been tailing out the big heavy stuff for Chris for the last three days. So uh, we really appreciate Pete. He finds Chris all sorts of freebie logs here, there and everywhere and uh, brings them in. We get to practice on them. He ends up with the offcuts and turns it into a living, basically. So um, there's so many opportunities in timber. Stick your nose into, like he says, Pete says, the local sommelier yard, make some friends with them. You know, what's one man's garbage is another man's treasure. So um, let's get uh, Chris up on the ASM. So the ASM is our automated sawmill. I'm gonna get um, one of the other guys to chat about it for a while. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Aaron. Take my uh, ear moss off so I don't yell at you. Um, <laughs> so, Chris and Peter are going to be running the, the ASM. Um, they've got a nice little pine log in there. Uh, Chris is just, just raising the mill just to open up the top of the log. The beauty about the ASM is is that you know it takes away that fatigue factor you're not having to, to push it all day every day so you know you get consistent um, you know production rate throughout the day Chris is a bit lucky because he's got Pete there uh, tailing out for him so it makes it even easier for him so the ASM that we're using today is a, a 10 inch mill, a 10 inch cut with a 25 horsepower IGX 800 uh, Honda engine on it. It's uh, EFI so it's pretty efficient uh, in regards to fuel consumption. The type of blade that Chris is using on the ASM today is our, our 6 2 blade. Uh, it's a pretty versatile blade. We sort of use it a lot for, for milling um, you know, hardwoods and softwoods. The pizza's taken off the waste now. The ACM is mainly designed to pretty much just stay in one location because um, it's it's you know it's a it's our high production model or high production mill. So you know efficiency wise, it would be better to, to bring all your logs to the mill and uh, probably set it up under cover. So Chris has opened the log up, he's now taking the waste off the left hand side of the log. And then we'll be into cutting some boards. The beauty about the swing blade mills is, is you can basically break down your log board by board. And uh, once you open the top of the log up, you can actually see you know, all the defects in the log, so you can actually grade as you go. As you can see, when Pete's tailing out, every time he removes the board, he sends back over the, you know, the, the right-hand side of the uh, of the track. And so he's clearly out of the you know the direction of the sawdust. Oh, okay, sorry. That's quite was it? Hit it. I don't know. So I'll just just let say again that um, looks like Chris is cutting six for twos um, out of the out of the top of the log. Um, and he's making his horizontal cut first. Okay.
Okay, now Chris is going to drop it to cut his next layer of boards. Looks like he's going a little bit thicker. Taking off the waste again on the left hand side of the log. So yeah, with the ASM, I'll just go through, um, you know, for people that have just joined us, what we're what we're running today. Um, so it's a 10-inch mill with a 25 horsepower Honda engine, uh, IGX 800. So it's fuel injected. like he's making sort of four inch step cut now for this layer. So by the looks of it uh, he's cutting uh, four befores. Now the good thing about um, you know the 10 inch mill or our swing blade mills is you can you can actually sharpen the blade while it's still on the mill um, just with the sharper that sharpener that comes with the with the sawmill package and once you're proficient at uh, sharpening uh, you know it'll probably take you sort of five ten minutes to sharpen a, a six tooth blade So how Chris is controlling the um, traverse of the mill is the lever on his left hand. So once he pivots the blade, he pushes the lever away from him and that moves the mill down the tracks towards feet. When he pulls the lever back, it comes back to him. Now Chris is just taking off the waste and we've done another layer. He's now resetting the sizing dial to zero and then moving the, the head, the, the sawmill head unit, all the way over to the left of the log again. He's now setting the dial sizing, the vertical sizing dial to zero and he's dropping it again. Looks like it's probably six inches again. So it definitely makes the, uh, the task of sawmilling a lot easier if, you, uh, if you've got an automated version of our you know, swing blade mills. As you can see, all, when you're cutting in the horizontal, all the sawdust is getting ejected underneath the high track, which just means that you're milling a lot more without having to stop and clear the sawdust away from your track if it was sitting on the ground. It looks like a six for one come out of there. Pivoting the blade into the vertical position and then back. Um, you may see that there's a big water bottle on top of the mill. Um, 
if the logs are, you know, we're milling pine, so it's, you know, it's been recently harvested, so there is still a fair bit of moisture in the log. So um, milling, we sort of don't really need to use water for this for this log. Um, and a good way of checking if you did need to use water is you'd mill half a log, stop, and then turn everything off, and then just check to see how warm the blade is. Now, if your blade is just warm and you can leave your hand on there, then you don't really need to use water. Um, other, on the other hand, if, if that blade is really hot and you can't leave your hand on the, on the blade, then that's an indicator to use uh, water. Um, so you can all quite easily just uh, fill up your water bottle and uh, set your flow of your water and then away you go. As you can see the ASM is pushing the uh, six six for fours to six for fours to, to peak. Being able to push the uh, board or the you know your heavy sleepers or heavy beams towards your packet just makes things a lot easier for whoever's tailing out. Pivoting the blade. Completed another layer. Moving the mill all the way over to the left hand side. Chris is actually lining the edge of the blade up with the, the bark line on the log. So when he drops, he's, he's got the blade set, so he's just taking off the waste to open the left hand side of the log. Pivoting the blade again, now taking the waste off. Reset, move the mill over to, to whatever width you want to cut, and then continue your horizontal cut, then pivot the blade again into the vertical. Now you can remove the board from your log once you've completed your vertical cut. There we go, and that's how you mill your log with using the ASM. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any any questions or queries, just um, just feel free to to send us a message. Okay, let's we'll see who what else we've got on for show. We can actually yeah, what we can do is put the planer blade on the. Um, JP or Junior Peterson and put a slab on and, and maybe slab, uh, dress a slab. So we'll try that. They were a little bit concerned that it may move while they're slabbing. So what Chris said is I'm going to go real slow. So it doesn't, you know, grab the log and move it. So he's taking out about an inch at a time. Now remember those hogger blades, those hogger tips are taking out the majority of it. So you can see he's taking out quite a chunk there.
And yes, you can saw in both directions. So he's moving over um, at both ends of the log, about an inch at a time. So I've just been told after we're um, finished with this planing, we're going to go back to the slabber mill. So how, how many times have you sat on a piece of lumber with a hand sander or even a little portable orbital sander. How many hours have you spent using sandpaper? Look at how quick this thing is. Now that Junior Peterson, it can um, slab up to three foot wide so if you've got something up to three foot wide it can cover the whole surface the larger mills the winch production frames they can they can do up to six foot wide So he's taken off quite a bit there, and that's another um, reason that, you know, you want your slabs nice and thick when you first cut them, um, that three inches, so that you can take off up to three quarters of an inch when you are planing. So we're just going to close up a look of that finish there, and then they're going to flip it over. Now, you notice he left a lip on one side. So that lip is um, going to be very helpful. It, it catches the side of the log once he flips it over and holds it against that side of the log. on this side. This side. Oops. Nope. He's going to have to go down. There's some hollows in there. So he's going to have to go down another click. Here we go. Start again. Now those long curly bits of sawdust, that's predominantly from the planer blades which means he's not taking a lot of timber off, it's mostly planing, not hogging. Uh, he's missed a bit, I think. I think he's going to have to go down another click. You basically want to take off just enough to make it level and clean all the surface off, but you don't want to waste too much timber.
So you can see there's a little hollow in the middle there. He really does need to go down another click. Yes, I just had a very good question from one of our visitors. Um, that planer blade fits on any of our sawmills. So that'll fit on the junior, the winch production frame, and the automated sawmill. Which is why um, there was, um, what was there, eight holes or something in it? Yeah, so it fits on all of the collars. Okay, so he could have gone down another click to get rid of that hollow, but he hasn't. Um, what's the finish like there, um, guys? What's the finish like? Yeah, really good. Oh, okay, Chris is saying it's really good. And and that was with a dull blade, right? <laughs> now, there's one more step if you want to get really, really picky, and that's the uh, sander kit. So the planer blade comes off, and there's another hub that uh, screws onto that same saw blade collar, and um, it's got like a Velcro pad and you can put a variety of um, um, sandpaper grits straight onto the hub. Um, so you can, you know, do 80 grit right up to, you know, glass finish grits. Um, so if you've got something that needs to be super, super, super um, smooth, that kit is also available for us. And it's, a, it's an amazing thing. Right, so I think now we're going to head back to um, the elm over here. Um, Marcus came to finish off his log so that he can head home for the weekend. Um, so I think they're going to make some more slabs happen. So are we doing a three inch drop this time? Oh, he's going to do a four inch drop. Why are you doing a four inch drop? Oh, because he's going to take this slab home for him, and he doesn't want anyone to be able to steal it. It's going to be so heavy, no one can lift it. That's actually going to be a beautiful slab, so it's past the crack, it's past the pith, and there's a whole bunch of variety uh, in the edges of this log, so it's going to have quite a lot of character in it. Yeah, check the gas, guys. Oh, it's good. <laughs> so, um, we've got a bunch of spectators showing up. They're not allowed into the sawmill yard until we are complete the demo day. And then they'll be coming in and um, asking questions about different machines and getting some hands on see how they run, see how easy they are to push, etc. So as you can see, they put those little plastic chocks in behind the bar that prevents the slab from pinching, pinching the bar and pinching the chain. And that's a big four inch slab, so it's it's gonna be heavy.
if you're interested in how long it takes to slab a slab, this is live, so you can record this. You can time this. So now that was, um, what did he say? Four, nearly four meters long, 3.9 meters long. So it's about 14 foot long. And two and a half to three foot wide. And that was a four inch drop. And this is an elm log. I don't know the density of it. It's not a soft wood though. It's very heavy. I would say fairly medium density. Not quite as hard as the eucalyptus. So they keep putting in those chocks to make sure it doesn't pinch the bar. It's going to pop at the end in a minute. There we go. So you, you turn the RPM down before you fully exit the log so that you don't pull the chain off the blade. So you notice he came out halfway and then he paused for a little bit. So now we need some manpower on these on this slab. That's, that's pretty heavy. That ain't going anywhere. This is where uh, a concrete yard and a forklift is very helpful. <laughs> okay, so what are they doing on the JP? Ooh, behind the, behind the scenes, it looks like they're putting a sander kit on. Ah, okay, we'll come back to that in a minute. So they're just cleaning the sawdust off the track. Um, the saw mill sends the sawdust to the left, um, but the slabber um, does have a bit of sawdust on the right, so you do need to keep that kind of clean so that the track doesn't clog up too much. That's very fine sawdust, so it's not such a big deal. Okay, are you timing this? That's a three inch, it looks like. So this is a trick every slabber knows, every slab sawmiller knows. You put water on the slab and the, the character just pops. So it looks like the last slab is going to be a 3 inch. And then they might use the sawmill to cut a little bit more out of the bottom section.
go back a couple of places. Yeah, I, I need to go down a bit lower. So that was my husband admitting he actually did need to go down another click on that last planing job. But now he's gonna, he's gonna be a she'll be right kind of guy and he's gonna use the sander and try and take out that extra click. I don't think it's gonna work, but oh well, we'll give him the time of day, shall we? Man, they're flying through that last slab. They must be wanting to get home in a hurry. So the guy to the left of Mark is his um, employee, Josh. So Josh is really young and keen and he's teaching him everything he needs to know about sawmilling. And that's, that's always really cool when you have someone young and fit that's interested to learn and good hard worker, you know, that can give you a, a day off here or there. And, especially when you're getting a bit older and tired, or it's really good to have someone there that you can rely on. That's really special. Thank goodness it didn't rain today. It has been raining for three weeks solid here, and the last three days has been really good for us. It's overcast, but it's not raining. I am so happy. So if you cut this tree, this log up into dimensional timber, you'll get a price for it. But the minute you turn it into slabs, and then if you have that planer and you can finish them, you're quadrupling what you can get for it. Right, what's the plan, guys? Are you going to use the dimensional saw for the what's left, or what are you going to do with that? Yeah, I'll take a two-inch cut off. With the sawmill? Yep. Okay. So he's going to optimize his log and take some uh, two inch stuff off with the actual sawmill, the dimensional saw. So there's not enough left for another slab, but you want to use the most you can out of this slab. So first he's got to line the blade back up with the plane from the slabber. So, if you can see, he's got an electric winch on there. So he just put his left hand up to adjust it down. The electric winch is for the vertical. If you didn't have an electric winch, you'd walk around the side and you'd use the hand winch. But this one's got an upgrade and that's the electric winch. You can buy that as an upgrade. And he can adjust that up or down right from where he's standing. It's really helpful when you're lining up a blade for any particular reason on that log. So he's just skimming the surface. He has to get the datum right first. And once he's got a nice parallel datum with the blade following the tracks, then he'll do his two inch drop. So what he's coming across is a really hard knot. And if you push the blade 
too fast through a hard knot, it will try and rise over it, much like a bandsaw or any type of flexible blade. So he's got to slow down through those really hard knots. Let the blade do the cutting. Don't rush it. to know how thin you can cut with this well those are pretty thin okay so now he's got a nice flat datum to start from So there's his uh, dial, he's adjusting it to probably two inches, I think he said. And there's his electric winch right on the unit, up or down, you can adjust it to the nearest millimeter. is an off cut but when you're dealing with rare timber durable timber um, you saw how valuable that was to peat the wood turner so yeah you hang on to every piece It looks like a uh, six by two. He's pulled off there. So he's going to get another six by two out of this at least. low down on that slab he's not using um, he's not using any easy dogs so initially that log was so heavy it wasn't going anywhere but once you get down to that final slab you you got to slow down a little bit in case it moves you know you don't want to be shoving it shoving it too fast with that blade when you're um, sawing a lot of small logs you would use the easy dogs and easy dogs are um, aluminum um, little brackets that you put on your bunks and it holds the log in place. It's got like a little pointy claw that holds that log still. And they're aluminum so that if you accidentally hit them with your blade, it's not going to damage your blade. The blade tip is tungsten and the easy dogs are aluminum, which is obviously softer. Okay, so I think that's it for that log. The slab that's left is um, probably going to be gold to peat. He's going to take that home and there you go, he's already talking deals with 
Josh and Mark. Oh yeah, I think he's probably going to end up with that slab. Right. So. Um, yeah, there you go. Pete's already talking about doing something with it. <laughs> I think he's drooling over the leftover slab. Right, so now we're going to head over to um, the Junior again, which uh, Chris has set up a sander kit on. Chris, are you able to show us how that sander kit attached, please? Okay, so basically, okay, so basically we just got we the, just disc, got on the here. disc on here. Four screws. Four screws, just like your blade. Just like your blade, put it on. You have you have the little sponge. The little sponge. That goes, that goes. Attaches on there. Attaches on there. Put it on. Put it doesn't on. Have to doesn't even have to be exactly in the middle. It's Velcro. And, and we have, our, we different have our different of grits paper. of paper. Yeah, I'm just going to um, chuck, I'm just gonna on chuck on an 80 grit, an 80 for, grit now. for now. But you can go right, you can go right to a, down to a, a 180, 180 on depending on how, how much of a finish, how much of a finish you need or want with the sanding pit. And that will just go on there, on there. And you're ready. And you're ready. I'll put it on a little I'll bit. Put it on a little bit better because I'm sideways here. So this is a bit trick with the sander is um, you need to start with it over the slab. You don't want to go into it from the side or you'll end up ripping off the sandpaper. So you need to start from the top and come down while it's already on the surface. So there you go. He's lowering it down. There you go. So he's lowered it down until it's just touching and you can see the dust coming from it already. And it doesn't need to be at full RPM. It can be a lot slower. You don't want to heat up the sandpaper. You want it to actually do its job. And you basically just go back and forth, doing little segments at a time. So similar to the planer, you can sand in both directions. Yeah. That's what I initially saw what made me grab them was all the bucks were like that. All right. Sorry, we're just we're just admiring the um, top slab that came off the original elm log. It's going quite bright orange the longer it sits here. 
sorry, we're focusing on the sander over there right now. <laughs> so Chris is now going to go down another click and go back over that surface again. So if when you see the little puffs of uh, dust coming up, you know it's doing some work again. Look at this guys, they can't wait to get their hands in there and feel how smooth that is. Just like a good woman, huh? You wait, they're going to put that bucket of water on next. Then that'll make that character pop. What? He's going to go down some more? Nope, he's finished. Yep. That's it. So that was just at idle. That wasn't even going that fast. Right, Pete, where's our bucket of water? Isn't that beautiful? So that turned a, a, a gray, old, ugly, bowed, wonky piece of wood into at least a hundred dollar top for a coffee table or a picnic table or something. So it's amazing how you can turn ugly looking stuff into something very valuable. So they're gonna sit there and drool over it for a while, guys. <laughs> I'm sure a woman comment came out there through there somewhere too. <laughs> so there's two bunch of guys drooling, one over the slab and the other one over the elm pile over there. So there's lots of uh, fishing stories happening about that as well. Yes, very small wastage, that's what they're saying is very high recovery and very little waste. And even the waste is not going to be wasted because Pete's going to take it home as gold <laughs> and turn it into some more peens. Okay, so Chris is going to finish off the ASM, it looks like. And Okay, that's going to be our last demo for the day. I think we're about 5 to 11. So, the automated sawmill. It came about because uh, my husband was getting sick of pushing. No. <laughs> um, it's actually really good for guys that um, don't want the hassle of having to hire staff, to hire someone and pay wages and go through all that. Uh, a lot of our American customers run them by themselves. Um, it's got a uh, board remover that can either bring the board back to you 
or push it off the far end if you do have a helper. So he's cutting the posts for my fence and these are four by fours. So he's using the board remover to push the board this time and that's helping Pete pull it off the far end. Now the ASM um, has pretty much a similar range of motors as the manual winch production frames but the the difference is that you're not pushing and that's reducing your fatigue for the day you know the operator can do an eight hour day you might need a couple of guys to help with the stacking or you can do it yourself and pull the board towards you as we saw earlier today but because you're not pushing the mill you're you're able to do more hours it's not it's not that hard so all the controls are 12 volts they're run off the battery that's on the main head unit so he's got left and right up and down and the drive is a little hydrostatic uh, motor run by um, a little four-stroke motor. I think it's four horsepower. And there's a shaft that runs under his foot um, that rotates and pulls chains back and forth from both sides of the log. So there's chains running through the track. It's a big loop of chain basically running through the tracks on the high side and the low side. And it's clamped to the sawmill. So it's pulling the sawmill back and forth along those tracks with the chains. So now this is pine, fairly soft pine. Pine grows like weeds in New Zealand. So we do have to treat it. Um, this is my fence that he's sawing, uh, the four by four post. They are three meters long, uh, about, um, Three times three is nine, about 10 foot, 10 foot long posts. So a third of that will end up in the ground and two thirds will be above the ground. So these will need to be dried and then they go away for treatment. And that treatment makes them durable in the ground. We've got, um, a three acre plot of land at home and we have um, fully fenced the entire three acres with the byproduct of our sawmills which is timber now it's just starting to rain just just a little bit so I'm glad it held off for our demo day so far which has been really good Hopefully he'll get that log done in the next 10 minutes and then we can um, get under cover. So this is, this is pretty heavy wet pine, but with that board remover, you know, starting, starting the board moving, that, that is really helping Pete when he's pulling them off. The momentum's already started.
Oh, Greg's just come out to watch with me. Hi, Greg. How's your day been? Oh, it's been great. So, did you, you, I see we were talking to people while we were sawmilling here. People that weren't really meant to be here, but they're so interested. Yeah, yeah. One, one of them was a, a mate of mine, actually. He's been talking a long time about coming down and having a look at Peterson sawmills. And, and he's got a, a great need up north for a sawmill. And um, he's got to come back and buy a, a, a winch production frame. And um, I see he's gone now. I've just been dealing with another couple who are looking at the JP and they've decided to buy one so we're very pleased to have them in the Peterson team. Wow, well that's a good thing. I, I heard our welder Ty is working on a batch of 15 this time round. Yeah, I think that's not going to be enough either. <laughs> yeah, no, those juniors are going like hotcakes. You know, even though we call it the junior, it, it, it's not very junior. It does it does an adult's work. It's, it's doing all sorts of things out there in the field. What are some of the things you know our owners are doing with the junior? They're doing all sorts of things. They're building um, dolls' houses, chicken coops, um, building their own house. Um, it's quite a range of different things that people are using them for. Um, some people just want a part-time mill to, to mill up a few logs as a hobby. So uh, that's the passion of people that like wood. Yeah. Now this, this ASM that we're watching, this, this automatic mill we're watching now, what kind of your customers, what are they doing with that? Uh, they're more serious and um, they're into um, they're into a business type thing um, we're selling those sorts all around the world often um, often into Australia they're they're a very popular mill in Australia the different milling conditions over there they they've got some beautiful hard timber but they've got some pretty hard conditions as well and that uh, the climate's really hot. Um, you can imagine saw milling at 40 degrees or over 100 Fahrenheit um, all day long with the sun beating down on you. It's not fun. So they uh, they prefer to make some shade at the end of the sawmill where Chris is That's a really good idea, yeah. yeah. So they, they protect themselves in that way. Um, the ASM offers them uh, uh, some relief from the physical side of milling as well. And so, uh, they are comfortable in the shade, they're not having to push the mill up and down in the sun. Um, ASMs are perfect for Australia. Yeah, and I see uh, a lot of our customers building purpose-made sheds for the ASM too. Sure, and, and they can incorporate some special features in there. Uh, the purpose-built shelters and sheds, um, they can support that, that high rail. Um, instead of having the uprights there, they can attach to their rafters. Oh yeah, make it a fixed side thing. Um, and clear that whole left side out so that um, there's no obstruction in there either to roll logs in order to clean that sort of out. So yeah. um, that works really well. So I just noticed Chris is slowing down for that final slab on the side there so it doesn't move. Yes, yeah, not much left on that side. So, no. Um, now here's a good hint. If you have... Uh, logs that are um, full of tension and they they're t prone to twisting and moving as you saw them you can leave that last little edge on the right that he just took off you can leave that on and it'll provide some strength uh, and form to the log while you go down and get your final cut at the bottom so sure. that that's a little trick that Chris yeah. taught me years ago yeah. acts as a brace a bit like angle iron gives strength to the yes um, and um it, it certainly helps stop the log sag in the middle. Yes, good point. So there's lots of tips and tricks. When you buy a Peterson, um, Greg and Aaron and Chris are an amazing team. They know how to make it easy to mill. So you're not just buying a machine, you're, you're, they're teaching you how to mill as well. Sure. So we've got a wealth of information here that we're happy to share with all our Peterson owners. And, um, uh, I say to people that are looking to buy a sawmill, Ask us questions, ask as many questions as you like. We're happy to help and uh, absolutely. And, and people take their time, do their research, understand what they're buying and and uh, we just want happy Peterson owners. Yeah, the hows and whys are important, aren't they? So he's getting nice and low on that log. Yeah. I hope he doesn't go too fast and move it. Yeah. Now we also have easy dogs which can hold the log in position. But these logs were so big to start with, they didn't even bother. 
But now that he's getting really low, he's going to have to slow down so he doesn't move that slab. Yeah. One of, one of the interesting things with saw milling with our Peterson mill is that how little influence that blade actually has on the log. You think it's going to push it around and nudge it, but it doesn't. Um, as we go through it, the sharp tips just cut their way through and, and they don't really move it that much. That's why we can get a great recovery out of the log. That's so true. Much and I don't hear that motor bogging down at all. No. So that RPM and the blade's up there and it stayed up there. Yep. He's watching closely now. Yeah, he's been a bit more careful. So Liam's getting a really good shot over there. I can't see from his end, but I'd say there's hardly nothing left there now. Pete's pulling off slivers. That's not even enough to keep my fireplace going. We can see Liam smiling. He, he can <laughs> see right through the bottom of that log. <laughs> we've, had, we've had logs that uh, once they're, the last cut's been made, it's just collapsed in the middle of this rubber you know? He's getting down there, isn't he? Yeah. This is, this is fun for a lot of storm They're going, yeah, I'm going the, to get that last yeah, yeah. they do. <laughs> that's the challenge. Yeah. How much more can I get out of it? And all those little bits you get, maybe maybe an inch by an inch by two inches. Um, it's a board, and you put it aside, and you'll use it. Yeah, you'll use it for stickers. You can never have enough stickers. So stickers are those little pieces in between each layer. You need those stickers if you're going to be drying them. No one ever has enough stickers. Oh, I got another, what's that? Six by one, we, eight by one. We can't see from here what's, what's left because of that. That, that edge, that fence is still there, but... Um, He's still working away at it. Out. Are we going to lay money on whether he's going to move that thing or not? I think he's got another inch board coming out of here. Oh, oh, it's starting to shake. Oh, there's a sticker coming off. And that's it. That's it. Congratulations, well done, Chris. Look at that. And there's a nice pile of timber there for my new fence. Yep. Woohoo! Milling in the rain. Thank you, Chris. Yep, it's dripping, it's raining. Um, I'd like to do a wrap up now, so if we can get the crew together, it would be really cool to do a wrap up. Aaron, right, so do I need to turn this off? Turn this off. Do I need to turn this off? Turn this off. We good. We good. Okay. Look, Karis. My name's Karis from Peterson Sawmills. Um, we're just going to do a wrap up now. Can everyone hear me? Yes, you're going to have to put that on the tripod because I actually want to see Liam, who's been behind this all day. He's going to look at me funny. <laughs> right, guys, can I get everyone behind me, please? In the rain. In the rain. Oh, what's, what's a couple of minutes of rain? Whoop de do. <laughs> don't, don't all hide behind him, buddy. <laughs> Come on, Josh. Come on, Aaron. Josh, Aaron. <laughs> Arsh, I need you too. You don't need to be there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, from Peterson Sawmills in New Zealand, thank you so much for watching today. Um, I hope uh, we've shared a little bit more about what our machines can do and um, despite the, you know, there's always things that go wrong. We've done an amazing job today and I want to thank the crew behind me that was doing all of this. So, um, so everyone here has done an amazing job. So Greg um, and Aaron are our sales team and then the people who've helped today, uh, Mark and Josh who are owners and have their own sawmills and run full time. Um, 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 Pete, uh, who's our local woodcutter, wood turner, 
He's been amazing. My husband, Chris, we wouldn't have a business without Chris. He's just incredible behind the scenes, running these machines, building these machines, and, and making them more user-friendly for you. We've got Liam. This is first demo day with all the equipment. It's been extremely <laughs> stressful for him. And I was a little bit bitchy at him this morning too. I'm sorry about that, Liam. But it's all come together and I really want to thank him for that. He's been an amazing addition to the team. And Arsh behind me, little quiet one, she's actually our CAD designer, but today she was um, technical behind the scenes helping Liam. So thank you so much team. Awesome day, awesome week. Signing out until next time. Ha ha ha!